Hi and welcome to Budget Audio Review and Upgrades and as promised this video I'm showing you how to adjust the DC bias of a Sansui 101 amplifier but this could be any amplifier really any receiver though the settings obviously will be slightly different probably and where you actually put the leads or the probe or whether you're going to check it from would be in a different place uh, to find this actual place and more information about your particular receiver stroke amplifier a good source is uh, iFi Engine, the site iFi Engine. I will put a link in the uh, description below. Go there and hopefully you'll be able to download uh, your service manual uh, for your particular uh, amplifier receiver. You, you will have to um, like join up the site and whatever, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm just going to show you a quick picture of the meter I'm using here. It's not very expensive meter. I mean, this is cheap. This is 9 or £10, 9 or $10, but it's going to be okay for what we're using. I'm going to use this meter quite a bit. In the actual video, I'll be using two meters just to show you them side by side, but you, you only need one because you can do each channel separately. No need to do them both at the same time like I've done. And uh, this is the setting we're actually going to turn the dial to. It's uh, it's on the DC amps, uh, and it's gonna, I'll put it down to 200 milliamps. I mean, uh, we're, we're looking for a, a range of about 20 milliamps, so there is a 20 milliamp setting on there, but we'll just go one further, so it gives us a bit of leeway there. So, and um, what I usually do, if I just, just quickly show you, you can actually obviously put the probes in the old two probes in, but let's use in two hands, uh, then you've got to turn the pot if needed, it's, or put the probes in, find the measurement, take them out, turn the pot, put them back in. It's, it's a bit you know long winded and cumbersome. I usually just get one of these crocodile clips, uh, wires, these link wires, patch leads they're called, that kind of thing, and just put it to one end, and this will go onto the board. You'll see it in the video on the other end, and that also go into the board. Make sure you don't short these out anywhere, put them somewhere nice and spread apart, um, so you don't short them out on anything or anything like that. You don't want to muck anything up, just say to be slightly wary of there. But other than that, that's it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start the video just, just really to show where to take the reading from. Uh, it was a bit, little bit low, I think it read about 13 or 14 uh, milliamps in the, in the particular video, and I thought, well, that's not much good. Maybe I should actually show you, so I'll turn them up a bit, uh, then turn it off, turn it back on for about 20 minutes. Uh, that's how long you should have it on, about 20 minutes before you do any of these adjustments. And I thought I'd better show you how to actually adjust them as well, uh, you know, what happens when you slightly adjust them and whatever. So that's pretty much it. So the first part will be me just showing you um, what they read now. Then the second part, I'll be adjusting them and I'll come back to me just to finalise it all off. Okay, got the Sansui 101 on the bench here. Just going to me measure the DC bias here. I did look in the manual, couldn't really, I couldn't see it there to be honest. I downloaded a couple of manuals, maybe it's in one of them, I just couldn't find one that was in. So I had to do a little search on the internet to actually find out what to do here, where to take the measurements from. Um, and you can uh, hopefully you can see if I move this out of the way, make sure this is always turned off. Obviously, there's the trimming pots there, and there, if we needed to adjust them, that's where we're going to go. And we're actually going to take these two fuses out to uh, measure here, and I'll tell you what to put the meter on, etc. Once I've got the fuses out, now you've got to be very careful. We don't want to break these fuses because obviously we'll have to go and get another fuse otherwise. So I'll kind of just take a screwdriver and try and place it underneath the metal part of the fuse and just gently prise it out one end then just gently just give it a little pull the other end and the end come out like that so that's one fuse out I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one underneath the metal part if we can just fuse you know just to undo it prise it gently until one end comes out and just gently pull the other one end and that's that now with my multimeter I've got it here I've got it set to uh, DC amperage here and it's on 200 milliamp because these are going to read about 10-15 milliamps somewhere around there hopefully so um yeah what i've done I've, I've, to make it a lot easier rather than putting my prongs in there is i've actually one end of the prongs with a crocodile clip these these, these crocodile these are cheap they're only about a pound each just make sure they're not shorting out anywhere so put that aside is the other end of it it doesn't matter which way we put this so we put it on the first channel and we just got it clipped to one side of the fuse and and, and the negative here is exactly the same crocodile clip and we're going to place that to uh, the other end of that, that particular fuse. And that's gonna be one channel as normal, the volume zero, balance zero on auxiliary. We're gonna flip the switch to turn it on and we're gonna flick it on and uh, see what our reading is there. Let's take a few seconds to settle down and uh, cause it did jump up quite a bit, a sudden surge there. But uh, after a while, just give it a few more seconds. It'll start leveling out 
and we're going to creep up to 14 now just say just make sure your controls before you do this all on zero all turned off and it's creeping up to 15 there and it'll slowly creep up and we're looking between 10 and 20 somewhere around there and I've had this on a while it will start creeping up and it'll, it'll level out and I think it, it kind of leveled out at about 18 thereabouts it kind of dipped back down to 17 so that's that channel done so we'll turn that off make sure you turn the uh, plug back off just in case we'll let that dwindle down a little bit and uh, we're just going to do the exactly the same with the other channel now we're just going to clip that on there hopefully you can see this clip that on there what i do is i just bring the camera in just you know i don't like doing these videos with cameras always awkward but hopefully you can see where them two wires are on each side of that fuse we're gonna put the camera back down without falling off the table and uh, there we go we're back on uh, you should be able to see the meter. I'll hold it up to the camera this time. Uh, we'll turn it back on again. And we'll turn the amp on. Make sure none of these are shorting out anywhere. It will have a sudden jump when you first turn it on. But um, as I lift the meter up, this is exactly the same as the other. Hopefully you can see the reading there in the light. It's not hard to see what you're actually seeing. And we're going to give that, uh, obviously, uh, 20 or 30 seconds to creep up. Give it a chance to start moving. And uh, it will come up. We'll put it back on there there it will start creeping up hopefully you can still see that it will start creeping up and i think that one went up to about 15 somewhere around there eventually and kind of hovered about there so there you go so that's um turn that off now so that's um how to check the uh dc bias on this particular uh sansui a101 your amp have all different you know download this you know the uh, circuit diagram and they have different places to put these clips in I always find it for myself easier to use a crocodile clip to get in you know you can clip on resistors you can clip on you know, a leg of a transistor just be careful you don't short out two legs doing it rather than just getting a probe and probing in there and your hand slips or shaking a little bit can cause a, a few more problems so okay hope that's helped and uh, there you go okay i've had this uh Sensui AU101 amplifier on for about 15 20 minutes now, and that's the best to have it on there. You can have the speakers connected, you don't have to, but I've got them connected here. But you, you don't have to, I've tried it both ways, it's exactly the same. And um, not a lot of information actually in the manual about this amplifier about the uh, DC bias. But um, if you go on the internet, quite a lot of people recommend about 20 uh, milliamps. So that's what we're going to go with today. 20, it's been on about say nearly 15 20 minutes, something like that. These will fluctuate, these have gone in that period of time, gone down to about 21, and they've even gone up to nearly 30. They kind of fluctuate, but they're kind of like steadying out a bit now. This is the right channel, this is the left. So we're going to do the adjustment. These are two variable resistors, one here, hopefully you can see them, and one just over this side. If you can't see it, it's because these wires and the ways and dodgy camera angles, but hopefully you get the idea with this one anyway. And we're just going to adjust it now. Uh, make sure the screwdriver fits in the hole nicely. You don't want to push down too hard. Just have a steady hand. I use these crocodile clips. Make sure they're not shorting out. It's a bit of a junk over there, but they're not shorting out. And uh, we're just going to adjust this one here first. So it's just to put it in there carefully and just a slight adjustment. And you'll see it there move. It can be quite erratic just for a small a movement. So we're going to get it nearly to 20 as we can. We're not going to get dead on. You know, it would be all day and you'd be backwards and forwards. And in the end, you're, you could quite easily wear that pot out. So um, we're on 18.3 now. We're just going to, I'm hardly trying to move it to be honest with you. See what I mean? Just a slight movement and it can jump right up. So I'm trying to just fractionally move it very slightly. And even taking it out, it does dip a little bit. But we're 18 point, yeah, 18 roughly. And we're going to do the same with the other one. That's, that's near enough. We're not going to be, we're not going to get them spot on. Unless you're going to spend all day there. We're going to get them. Just a fraction of a movement can be a major difference, believe it or not. <coughs> so there you go. We're hovering about the 18, and uh, that's near enough to 20. Uh, you know, it may actually creep up to 18.5, something like that. Uh, it's fluctuating between 17 and 18, maybe 19, say. But um, yeah, they, as you can see, even, even adjusting it, you're still going to get that slight fluctuation. But that, that's fine, and we're going to leave it like that. So uh, that's adjusting the DC bias on this uh, Sansui 101. 
Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that's been an help to uh, some people out there. Like I say, there's um, plenty of manuals to be downloaded on iFi Engine. Find your manual and hopefully uh, it'll tell you the points to uh, put the meat or your crocodiles clips into and uh, take them readings. Just be careful of dropping screwdrivers in and keep your hands clear of any transformers. You know, you know just be careful when you do it all. Uh, and hopefully that will be okay. I use that particular amplifier because it's quite um, quite a lot of room inside. And uh, well, some of these others, you've already got any room, you're, you're getting in tight and it'd been awkward to, to film and whatever. So um, yeah, a good amp to start off with, that Sansui 101. And it's quite a nice sounding amp as well. And it don't go for a lot of money really, about £100, $120, something like that. And it's uh, quite a good starting off amp, that's for certain. Okay, to the next video, I'll uh, say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.